Hi, and welcome to Kids in a Blanket, a podcast made by kids for kids who love to read and for parents who don't have the time to read to them. Our family loves to dance. On today's episode, we will be reading books about dancing. We'll be reading Angelina Ballerina, Barnyard Dance, and Fancy Nancy in the Mermaid Ballet. Make sure to listen to the end when we tell our joke of the day. Angelina Ballerina by Katherine Holliburn. More than anything else in the whole world, Angelina loved to dance. She danced all the time, and she danced everywhere. And often she was so busy dancing that she forgot about the other things she was supposed to be doing. Angelina's mother was always calling to her. Angelina, it's time to tidy up your room now. Or... Please get ready for school now, Angelina. But Angelina never wanted to go to school. She never wanted to do anything but dance. One night, Angelina even danced in her dreams. And when she woke up in the morning, she knew that she was going to be a real ballerina someday. When Mrs. Mouseling called Angelina for breakfast, Angelina was standing on her bed doing curtsies. When it was time for school, Angelina was trying on her mother's hats and making sad and funny faces at herself in the mirror. You're going to be late again, Angelina, cried Mrs. Mouseling. But Angelina did not care. She skipped over rocks and practiced high leaps over flower beds until she landed right in old Mrs. Hodgepodge pansies and got a terrible scolding. At playtime, she twirled and spun across the playground so fast that none of the little boys in her class could catch her, and they were all very annoyed. After school, she did a beautiful arabesque in the kitchen and knocked over a pitcher of milk and a plate of her mother's best cheddar cheese pies. Oh, Angelina, your dancing is nothing but a nuisance, exclaimed her mother. She sent Angelina straight upstairs to her room and went to have a talk with Mr. Mousling. Mrs. Mousling shook her head and said, I just don't know what to do about Angelina. Mr. Mousling thought a while and then said, I think I may have an idea. That same afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Mousling went out together before the shops closed. The next morning at breakfast, Angelina found a large box with her name on it. Inside the box was a pink ballet dress and a pair of pink ballet slippers. Angelina's father smiled at her kindly. I think you are ready to take ballet lessons, he said. Angelina was so excited she jumped straight up in the air and landed with one foot in her mother's sewing basket. The very next day, Angelina took her pink slippers and ballet dress and went to her first lesson at Miss Lily's Ballet School. There were nine other little girls in the class, and they all practiced curtsies and plies and ran around the room together just like fairies. Then they skipped and twirled about until it was time to go home. Congratulations, Angelina, said Miss Lily. You are a good little dancer, and if you work hard, you may grow up to be a real ballerina one day. Angelina ran all the way home to give her mother a big hug. I'm the happiest little girl in the world today, she said. From that day on, Angelina came downstairs when her mother called her. She tidied her room and went to school on time. She helped her mother make cheddar cheese pies, and she even let the boys catch her on the playground sometimes. Angelina was so busy dancing at Miss Lily's that she didn't need to dance at supper time or bedtime or on the way to school anymore. She went every day to her belly lessons and worked very hard for many years. Until at last she became the famous ballerina, Mademoiselle Angelina, and people came from far and wide to enjoy her lovely dancing. Barnyard Dance by Sandra Boynton Stomp your feet! Clap your hands! Everybody ready! For a barnyard dance! Bow to the horse, bow to the cow, twirl with the pig if you know how. Bounce with the bunny! 
Spin with the chickens now. Cluck, cluck, cluck. With a ba and a moo and a cockle doodle do. Everybody promenade two by two. Prant with the horses. Skater with the mice. Swing with your partner once or twice. Stand with the donkey. Slide with the sheep. Scramble with the little chicks. Cheep, cheep, cheep. With a neigh and a moo. And a cockle doodle do. Another little promenade. Two by two. Trot with the turkey, leap with the frog, take another spin with the barnyard dog. Turn with the cow in a patch of clover. I'll take a bow and dance is over. With an oink and a moo and a quack, 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 the dance is done but we'll be back. Fancy Nancy and the Mermaid Ballet, written by Jane O'Connor. I have thrilling news. Thrilling means terrific and exciting, all mixed together. We're going to be in a ballet, I tell my mom and Jojo. It's called Deep Sea Dances. I am positive, that's fancy for 100% sure, that Madame Lucille will pick Brie and me to be mermaids. We play mermaids all the time. Jojo's kiddie pool is our lagoon. A lagoon is a fancy kind of lake. The night before dance class, I perform for everyone. Not to brag, but I am the most graceful person in my family. Ta-da! I make my grand entrance. I do leaps that are called jetés and knee bends that are called plies. Don't you love how so many belly words are in French? Oh, maybe Madame Lucille will... Make me head mermaid, then I lower my voice. Of course I'll feel terrible if I end up with a bigger part than Brie. Nancy, remember, being in a ballet is thrilling no matter what part you have. I nod. I guess my mom is worrying that Brie won't get a good part too. Today I hardly wobble at all when I bounce on one leg. And I am almost positive that Rhonda bumped into me, not the other way around. Twice, Madame Lucille says, I am making progress. That's fancy for getting better. I say, mercy, Madame. Then I curtsy in a special ballet way. At the end of class, Madame Lucille announces the parts Brie and I sit together. All my fingers are crossed. I can hardly stand the suspense. At pickup time, I tell my dad the awful news. I am a treat. And I'm just an oyster! Brie says. My dad acts like this is thrilling. Dad, you don't understand. My costume will be brown, I explain. There's no way to look fancy in brown. Later, we have a tea party to cheer ourselves up. I say, Sherry, that's French for darling. You are going to be the greatest oyster ever. Bree says, nobody will be a better (laughs) tree than you. At the next dance class, we practice our parts. And guess what? I'm not just a plain old tree. Madame Lucille tells me to pretend I am a weeping willow. Willows are very graceful. Madam says. Their branches swoop and sway and swirl in the wind. I swoop and sway everywhere I go. I make my face look very sad because I am a weeping willow. A week later, there is startling news. Startling is fancy for surprising, only in a bad way. Savannah, who is one of the mermaids, has sprained her ankle. She cannot dance. But Madam Lucille tells us. Savannah can still be in the ballet. She will be one of the oysters and Brie will take Savannah's place as one of the mermaids. Say what? Brie throws her arms around me. She is beaming. That's smiling from ear to ear. I'm so happy for you, I say, only I don't really mean it. I like it much better when neither of us got to be a mermaid. At home, I stuff my beautiful costume in the back of my closet. My mermaid days are over. When I, when my mom comes to say good night, I tell her about Brie. I'm a terrible girl. I lied. I said I was happy for her, and I'm not. That's not lying exactly. You want to be happy for Brie, don't you? My mom asks me. Of course, she is my best friend. 
It's just hard now because Brie got something you wanted very much. You're jealous, but your heart is so generous and warm, it will melt all the bad feelings away. I am 100% positive that my mom is the wisest mother in the world. The next morning, I give Brie my fanciest shell tiara. It's yours for keeps, I tell her. I wish we were both mermaids. Soon it is time to get ready. My costume is magnificent. My branches are made of tinsel, and I wear a little nest in my hair. I'm going to be the fanciest willow tree ever. The ballet is a smashing success. That's fancy for a big hit. When it's my turn to dance, something happens. I feel carried away by the music. I swoop and sway almost as if I was a real weeping willow. At the end, we all get a standing ovation. That means everyone jumps up and claps like crazy. My parents give me a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Merci, I say. Mom, you were right. It was thrilling to perform in a ballet. We all go to King's Crown to celebrate. Bree and I toast each other. That means we clink our glasses together, and then we shout, Bravo for us! Now for the joke of the day. What's an owl's favorite type of dance? The hula. Thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe to Kids in a Blanket podcast in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Kids in a Blanket podcast was hosted by Lucas, Ellie, and Ethan Immerman. Sound engineering by Ethan Immerman. Original song and editing by Lucas Immerman. And production by Ellie Immerman.